lost their lives. Five still in the hospital. This basketball team, Tom Izzo's leadership, they provided somewhat of a respite the last couple of games. And Michigan State on the road begins with the ball. Kelly Pfeiffer, Lewis Garrison, John Floyd, our officials, a sold-out crowd. It's early, but it is packed black and gold here in Iowa City. Spartans start with Tyson Walker. And Walker's jumper is long. Chris Murray, the likely first-team All-Big Ten performer with a rebound. And here's the Iowa starting five. The guards, Perkins, Ulis, and the nation's leader in assist to turnover rate, Connor McCaffrey. Philip Rebrot just played very well, along with Murray, the two Hawkeye bigs. To see Michigan State going AJ Hogard on Chris Murray, and we'll see if Iowa can get him going. He has certainly struggled the last two. If I was going to win and win big going forward, Chris Murray has got to be a factor. That jumper buried by Jaden Aikens. The same starting five for the 19th straight game for the Spartans. Hogard, one of the nation's leaders in assist rate. Walker, a very good score with Aikens, the red hot Hauser, and Marty Sissoko. Here's Murray. First shot for him is pure. It's going to be interesting to see how does A.J. Hogart, smaller, going up against Chris Murray, handle him in the post. Murray just facing up and shooting right over the top. And this is Soko. Waited and then smashed it through the onrushing Perkins. I thought Sissoko gave really good minutes for Michigan State. Stat line just two points, three rebounds, but he battled Trace Jackson Davis. He brought a level of toughness, and he did it much so without fouling. He and Jackson Colder were terrific. Absolutely. Of course, Jackson Davis into seven turnovers. McCaffrey lets a three go. The offensive rebound is there for Perkins. That's not going to make Tom Izzo happy. That's the smallest guy on the floor for Iowa. Going up, getting an offensive rebound, and getting a putback. Perkins just two for five in the opener against Michigan State. The Spartans hey. win by two. That not a foul. I do not know. Murray in transition. Finishes basket. I, I have no idea how that's not called a foul. Monty Sissoko gets just blasted going up for the lob, but Iowa taking advantage, and Chris Murray getting out finding an easy one in transition. Sparty won 63-61 January the 26th in the first meeting. A couple of late jumpers by Walker and Aikens. There's Hauser. Working on Murray has that slow old man's game, and Murray got to him for the block. You can see Chris Murray was just sitting on that one. Joey Hauser a little indecisive, and Murray taking it right away. Murray, a good three-point shooter, left it well short. Here's that call that Tom Izzo's not pleased about, and as Soko goes up for the lob, I mean, he just gets blasted from all sides. Could have been a foul in the front, could have been a foul from behind. It's a Sissoko sandwich that went on call. Walker, such a deft ball handler, so nimble with the left hand, and Walker scores, plus a foul. Right now, Philip Abracha, Aaron Eulis, having a conversation about their pick and roll defense, and Tyson Walker finding an opportunity off this switch. Abracha trying to move his feet, but Walker, who found opportunities at the rim against Indiana Tuesday, getting downhill and getting by Rebracha. Now an opportunity for a three-point play. You saw Iowa Wednesday in the loss to Wisconsin. There were some pick-and-roll breakdowns in that game, too. And certainly there was. But my biggest takeaway was how many open shots have they gotten and missed? It's just been so crazy to see this. Six of 52 from three the last two games. And we showed those home road splits when we came on air, but can they find some confidence here in a building that they have shot the ball much better in all season long? Graham McCaffrey, 13th year at Iowa. Just saw Jackson Kohler off the bench pick up a foul. The least calls in the game for Michigan State as well. Freshman Colder played so well Tuesday. Robracha, 25-year-old, will take him and score. That's just a grown man move from Philip Robracha. He's been so consistent for this Iowa team. 20 in the last 22 games. He's been in double figures. Jackson Kohler's baptism by fire continues here. You think about who he's gone against, whether it's Zach Eady, Trace Jackson Davis, both those guys twice, Hunter Dickinson twice, Oscar Sheepway, Drew Timmy. I mean, he has seen everybody this season. And on the other end, they'll work it right through him and right over the top of Rebracha. He can do that. He's now eight of his last ten from the field. 
the last five games and Jackson Kohler Certainly a guy that knows how to score it knows how to find angles in his looks in the post Here We go again Zero on zero Robracha spinning Robracha scoring Iowa went to Robracha in the meeting in January early and often and you can see right here the game plan is when Jackson Kohler's in there They are going right at him Turn into a one-on-one -on -one battle here. Hogard will snap that with a three. Just a 29% three-point shooter. AJ Hogard. It's his first shot. Big shot for him. Just 17% from three on the road. He's been much better at the Breslin Center. In the Murray stuffed, and he got it back and scored. Hauser came from behind with a block, but Murray followed his miss. And in transition, that ball thrown away to Kohler. And then Robracha gives it right back with a travel. Great pace, great offense, not much. At a candlelight vigil last Wednesday, just one of the things Top said that resonated, he talked about how gun violence is insane right now. We all have a platform. Some are small, some are big, but we all have a platform. And Top said, look, people think of me as a UP. I've been at Michigan State for 40 yeah. years now. This is my home. This is what I live. That community has come together. They've been supported throughout the Big Ten, throughout the nation. And the resilience this school has shown in the face of unspeakable tragedy We can't say enough to what he the leadership of Michigan State first responders and the folks there have done and we send them our love and support as well Third game back for Michigan State and time admitted to us before the game look we had the first game We had the first home game just not sure what the emotional level is going to be well, it, It's just team. been such a difficult week for this group and certainly they get put on national television that they become the faces of the university in a time that it's nothing that anybody signed up for but it's just the way that it is it's an unthinkable tragedy and it just changes need to happen we can't keep doing this to our students and it just it unfortunately continues to happen but I do think that Tom Izzo's speech was phenomenal, and he, he's a great representative of not just, uni just, just this university, but also the Big Ten in, in, as a whole. 28th year as the head coach, Michigan State. Here's McCaffrey with a three. Connor McCaffrey, Iowa's three-point shooter. Their best behind Chris Murray at 34% with his first basket. He was 0 for his last eight, the last two, and maybe that will break the seal for the Iowa Hawkeyes. Missed their first two looks from downtown, but... Right there, Connor McCaffrey, that was pure. And a steal for Murray. Took it away from Walker, and then wow. Walker knocked it away from Murray. Last touch by Walker, but a phenomenal play to get back. It really was. Tyson Walker throwing it away, but never gave up on the play. And look at the way that Chris Murray rocks that ball back to the other side. And that allows Walker the window to make a play on it. Just a terrific hustle play by Tyson Walker. Murray off to a two, a three for five star, beg your pardon, for six points. 20 point per game score. Eulis up and under. Missed it. Sissoko back in the game with a Michigan State rebound. We'll see if Iowa goes at Monty Sissoko the way they went at Jackson Kohler. Kohler subbed in the game, and it was immediate. Hogard, strip, bodies on the deck. Couple of Hawkeyes are there, and a tie up will go to Iowa. This is something to watch here because turnovers as a whole on the year have been much better for Michigan State. Only 11 a game. It is in the top 50 nationally now. It is eighth in the Big Ten, but they at times do have a tendency to get a little loose with it. And that can rear its ugly head from time to time. It certainly has here early with five turnovers just six minutes into the game. Iowa is not a good defensive team, but they are good at two things avoiding fouls and creating takeaways Paige Sanford off the bench missed a deep two Patrick McCaffrey's checked in for Iowa as well Four straight turnovers for Michigan State Early two for Hogarth, which is a big surprise. Assisted turnover rate 2.3 to 1 for the junior. He turned it over early against Indiana as well. And in the last 32 minutes, he played terrific. Here's Hall. There's another one. Five turnovers in a row committed by the Spartans. Is Iowa doing something collectively? Or I, I just feel like Michigan short? State's been sloppy. You said it. It's not like I was a team that has been great defensively on the year They will turn you over at times with their pressure in their press, but no, I just feel like this has been on Michigan State 
Perkins. Insider of Racha. Couldn't catch the lob cleanly. Gets it back against Sissoko and scores. Rabracha three for three and owning the paint early for Iowa. They continue to go to him right there. Rabracha brought it down initially, allowed Malik Hall to make a play on it, but he gathered it and went straight up and went strong over the top of Sissoko. Tough fadeaway by Hall. It's not a turnover, but it's a one and done for Sparty. Patrick McCaffrey. Murray a three. Good rebound by Hauser. He's just been a little out of sorts with his jumper. A lot of contact there as Jay Nakins went down, and Fran McCaffrey is incensed, thinking maybe Akins was tripped by one of his players or tripped himself, but it's called against Iowa and Patrick McCaffrey. Michigan State trying to push the tempo here. Boy, oh, that, yeah. that is Spartan on Spartan right, right there. Sissoko. Sissoko got him. And that's, that's a break from Michigan State. Well, the foul was called on 22. Just the wrong 22. <laughs> Here's the freshman Kohler. Double team comes. Stripped away by Perkins. Seventh Michigan State turnover. McCaffrey missed it. And Iowa still four from three with a one for five start. Patrick McCaffrey getting a great look. Tony Perkins. Trying to get that defense to create some offense, but McCaffrey now two for his last 15 from the three-point line. Walker off a couple of screens. Well short. Kohler is there. Kohler couldn't get the rim. Hall banks it home on the third shot of the position. Michigan State sticking with it, whether it was Kohler or Malik Hall, just hanging around and finding a second chance opportunity there. First offensive rebounds of the game for Michigan State. Into Rabracha. Against Kohler. Right hand. Shoves it off the rim and good. He is terrific at getting to that left shoulder. Right there using the pivot. It picked up his dribble. But still the presence of mind to get exactly what Philip Rabracha wants. 25 years old. From Sambor, Serbia. Iowa by way of the University of North Dakota. Hogard missed a two, and Rabracha's nice middle right there. You got Rabracha on you. That's where AJ Hogard's going to take that to the rim. Walker knocks it away for Perkins. Hall left-handed collects it. Hawkeyes draped all over and found Walker slicing into Rabracha, and Walker again scores with the left hand. You got multiple Hawkeyes trying to take the ball from Malik Hall, and once he was able to break that initial pressure, Michigan State had numbers. Tyson Walker slicing into that painted area and getting to the rim once again. You watch Walker for a couple of possessions, you wouldn't know which is his dominant hand. Great. Transfer from Northeastern. Played at such a high level these last two games. Speaking of playing at a high level, it is a five-for-five five start for Philip Rabracha. Two games prior to Wisconsin for Rabracha, he'd only taken 14 shots. And I promise you, he's taken more than seven today. <laughs> they are going to him early, and he is taking advantage of a freshman right now on the block. We'll have Sissoko check in at the next whistle. Hall leading against Murray. Wow. He scored it anyway. That was tough from Malik Hall. How did he have the angle? Really didn't. Made a tough shot. Still have not hit the under 12. McCaffrey, now we have. A travel against Patrick McCaffrey, but a great start for Philip Rabracha. Much game, and Indiana's balance has really stood out. Terry Morin has done such a good job. The crowds at Assembly Hall that they've had, phenomenal, and it's going to be no different tomorrow with Carver Hawkeye. Caitlin Clark, by the way, was talking to some folks on our. A woman's group from tomorrow's game last night. Her average depth of shot on a three-pointer is about 26 feet this yeah, year. That's the nose of the Hawkeye right there. <laughs> Hogard stripped his third turnover. Michigan State's eighth. These turnovers are just killing the Spartan offense. And they just are not giving themselves a chance. And now a bad gamble by Hogard, and he picks up a foul. Seven lead changes, four ties in the game. First meeting on January the 26th, six ties and 13 lead changes. Michigan State, 63-61 win. Josh Dix on the floor for the first time. Here's Murray. That one's deep. And Iowa's three-point woes continue. 
Chris Murray has got one of his last 14 from three. So over the last three games, he just is a good shooter, but he, he has lost his touch. This is a pretty staggering yes, number. It is. It's amazing. Three-point percentage home and then road neutral games. Murray 28% away from home. Perkins down to 16. And, and today it hasn't necessarily held up because I was one of six from three, but on the season. And there's going to be some difference there. You're going to shoot it better at home than you are on the road, but to see how big those discrepancies are, it's been jarring. Not yet a bounce by Connor McCaffrey. Spartans have it with Walker. Joey Hauser's only taking one shot here. Got to get him a look. There's Akins. Into the body of Dix, throws it up off the rim. Hauser nearly had another look, couldn't corral the offensive rebound. Patrick McCaffrey off for Sanford. Another missed three. Murray's there to grab it. Sanford again, clean look, clean finish. I promise you, Peyton Sanford is not going to be bashful. It doesn't matter one bit that he missed the first. He is looking for the next. And off the offensive rebound, terrific find from Chris Murray. Getting this shooter a terrific look from the left wing. Into Hauser. Dix is on him. Double team came with Sanford. Hauser again. Up top a triple his first points. I would just lost track of Joey Hauser off the drive. Some confusion there by the Hawkeyes. And Hauser finally getting a look from three. On, Kelly, nice slip. McCaffrey to McCaffrey. Big brother feeds little bro for the deuce and then Walker again his third left-handed layup of the game and a chance for his second three-point play. We're just talking to Holly Rowe who's everywhere. <laughs> Sitting right behind his DC. Hey, here are the big Ted standings right now. Top four get the double bye and uh, basically anybody can get the double bye right now. Northwestern though, Robbie, still hanging tough alone in second place. I mean, it's just, I have never seen a log jam like this in the Big Ten Conference with so many teams this late in the year that can still find their way into playing on Friday at the Big Ten Tournament. Hawkeyes have the lead at home. Iowa 7-1 and one at home in the Big Ten. 2-6 and six on the road. It's been the case with a lot of teams. Foul against Monty Sissoko is his first. Brotch is back on the floor after a couple of minutes out of the game. It's five for five for a game high ten for the Hawkeyes. Here's a deep three from Sanford. You said he wouldn't be best. does not matter. I mean, he is just always looking for his shot. And if you're Michigan State, You've got to be aware. He's had games where he's absolutely gone off. 22 at Rutgers, 26 against Michigan. And he's had an interesting year. Started off in the Big Ten, 0 for 19 from the field. And he has found his way back. That, that is as deep as they come. Peyton Sanford, that's Caitlin Clark range out there by the Hawkeyes. Took the words right out of my mouth. Second three for Sanford, who had two looks to win the game in East Lansing. Two good looks from three and missed him in the closing seconds. Come on the second one that he took there. He didn't catch it clean, but the, the first one certainly a great play drawn up. And that is always a good look for Joey Hauser. Really, little roll and replace action. You're rolling Sissoko, you're raising Hauser. And that whole backside is cleared out. Get him quality looks from three. He's going to punish you with him. 42% on the season for Hauser. The guards, Connor McCaffrey. Patrick McCaffrey. Hauser crashing the glass, got the rebound. Helping out, Sanford. Helping out Tyson Walker, who was fighting for his life down there. It's a freshman, Trey Holloman. Michigan State does not get a ton of production off the bench. Malik calls their one big score at nine per game. Nobody else more than 4.2 points off the bench. Hauser against Sanford. Hauser, Hall, good fake by Hall. Into a jumper, he rattles it into time. Well, Hauser attracting so much attention on the post against Sanford, and he finds Malik Hall wisely playing off the closeout and finding a 15-footer. What a pass. Oh, my goodness, McCaffrey just rolling it through to his brother. It's the second time we've seen Patrick McCaffrey active as a back cutter. Michigan State falling asleep, and Connor McCaffrey finding his brother once again. 
field goal percentages right now. It's not really surprising, honestly. Oh, it's, it's in Iowa, especially in this building. 63% for the Spartans when they don't turn it over. They're unstoppable right now. Walker penetrating. Whoa! How about that angle from Walker? Over the top with just the right amount of English to get that to fall. But we have seen Tyson Walker get to the paint and finish over the top of whoever is guarding him from Iowa. Spartans have made their last five. Sanford passed up a two. Dix missed a three. Quickly into Walker. 13 for 20 start for the field. Michigan State, three for four from three. Here's Hauser with space. And you can't give him any. It's the same deal, but this time Hauser on that weak side. Roll and replace action. Sissoko rolling to the rim, and Hauser on the backside drilling it from the wing. The 10 to 2 run, six consecutive makes for Michigan State. Right now, projected six seed in Joel Donardi's bracket. Trying to up that number down the stretch. McCaffrey doesn't use the Rebracha screen, but slipped it through to him. A little stumble there by Rebracha, and then Sanford comes up with it and bombs away another three. I agree with you. I thought that Rebracha slipped would have had a layup, but off the offensive rebound, a terrific time to shoot it. Peyton Sanford locked and loaded. He's three for four from deep. Holloman with six to shoot. The freshman Holloman snaps that. Streak of six makes in a row for the Spartans. Good defense there by Patrick McCaffrey locking in and contesting that jumper. Question for Michigan State right now, where is Sanford? Trying to get free off screens here. The second he crossed half court, you better hope that Michigan State has found him because I promise you he's getting him up. McCaffrey. And look at Rebracha, good position. It will stay with Iowa after the under four. Immediate timeout at Gonzaga, St. Mary's and the Zags. And then Big Monday, start in Tallahassee. North Carolina, not going to get a quad one win in that one, but a game they can't lose, followed by Baylor, Oklahoma State. All these games on ESPN, all on the ESPN app. And that's what happens when you have an Iowa game at home. You stack the promos together because they play so <laughs> darn fast. There's a three missed by Malik Hall. Monty Sissoko in the offensive glass, and he traveled with it. He does turn it over. It's a dead ball one, but Tom Izzo is going to take the effort that Monty Sissoko brought on that play. Running the floor initially, getting the initial search, finding someone in the corner. Would have taken him out of bounds. Getting on the offensive glass. Michigan State shooting 61% from the field and 67% from three. They stopped turning it over. They have been scoring it at such a high rate. Both teams with 10-point scores in a game. Walker and Rebracha both with nine point scores. Hauser and Sanford. Here's Perkins. Got it. Michigan State just getting their wires crossed there. And two going with a cutter. Tony Perkins ready to go. And what a find from Rebracha. Had the whole side, but Perkins making himself available. It's the third assist of the game for Rebracha to go with his 10 points. This is coming for Hauser. They love to run this play, and he's been so effective off screens. He, he is going to the baseline. Sissoko sets the initial screen, then he just goes and pins right in for Hauser. Walker and Hauser, 16 of the last 18 Michigan State points. It's Rebracha again. It's Ulis. It's another Hawkeye three. It's a home game. <laughs> That's what this is. I mean, we are just balling on both ends of the floor. Aikens pull up. Aikens, he's balling as well. Michigan State, five for seven from beyond the arc. One of those games to get your numbers up. <laughs> your, your scoring average, your shooting percentages, this is on both sides. Foul on Malik Hall. Oh, man. Well, this is a, another nice pass out of the post here. Rebracha has really facilitated 
Michigan State so worried about him as a scorer, and then Jaden Aikens ready to let this fly. One of the fans not liking Malik Hall's disdain uh, for the call. Get your mic a little closer to your mouth there, buddy. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> These things I thought oh were a little more sensitive. Man, I'm kidding. <laughs> it's a battle down there. That could have been Sissoko's second foul. He's fortunate he didn't get it. Hard charge by Rabracha. And he's fouled. It is the second on Sissoko. Right on cue. Boy, Rabracha looked absolutely determined to get that shot up. He thought he got fouled on the initial duck in, but he never gave up on it. And then Sissoko, you're too valuable. He, he's done a much better job of guarding Rabracha compared to Jackson Kohler, but you see the contact there on the shooting arm, and Rabracha going to earn a trip to the foul line. Eventually, once he gets the shirt tucked in appropriately. Maybe some blood right now for Rabracha, or at least just wiping his face. He started his career at North Dakota. It was his lone scholarship offer coming from Serbia. Second year at Iowa, Fran McCaffrey feels like that first year in the Big Ten, getting to play against all these good bigs, was absolutely necessary for the development we've seen this year. I just thought from the jump, he was so much more aggressive, and he's letting them know, you can't guard me out here on the floor. And Honestly, in the first half, they haven't been able to. But I thought the, the first time I saw Philip Robracha play this season, and he was taking balls off, off the rim and leading the break, he was just playing with a different level of confidence. And over the last 22 games or so, he has been so productive. And now double figures in 21 of 23 as of this first half with a dozen. One minute to play in what's been a wildly entertaining first half. Here's Hall into the body of Rabracha. Missed it. And McCaffrey rips it away. Rabracha doing a nice job of contesting the shot but not fouling. That's a tough matchup for him with Malik Hall. And Hall had the whole lane line on that right side. Rabracha winning that battle. He's only committed one. Merkins was looking to whip it to Murray. Instead, Rabracha. Hall is there. And Rabracha with only his second miss of the game. The shot Michigan clock State, is off. Michigan State really small, so they're going to look to go into him. This is the last position of the half won't matter, but not surprised to see them go right at Malik Hall and Joey Hauser. Hogard takes the use it or lose it timeout. Will 25 years old, one of the nine oldest players in Division I men's basketball. Joey Hauser on the other end, the graduate student, has been terrific for Michigan State. A lot of players have been terrific offensively in this game. Akins, he's one of them, hits his second three. And Iowa will... Eulis doesn't pass Malik Hall off to Rabracha. That overloads that left side, and then you can see Rabracha, who's the middleman in the zone, has to get out. Michigan State had a foul to give. And it's committed by Holloman with 2.2 to go. Eight ties, nine lead changes in this first half. Michigan State's brought Jason White, transfer from Western Michigan in for the end of this half. He'll guard Chris Murray. <laughs> You've been sitting on the bench for an hour. Come guard an All-American. And Murray will get the ball. And Murray will miss a three. Season high for first half point at Carver Hawkeye Arena. Iowa right now projected nine seed in Joel Denardi's bracket. They're almost assuredly in the tournament unless they lose out. One more win probably seals their fate in Michigan State, a six seed with one of the nation's top strength of schedules. Big Ten tournament seeding on the line as well as Malik Hall takes it inside Robracha. A lot of folks wanted to travel, but Hall finishes. And a Spartan strike first in a second. I thought Malik Hall could have scored that right away. He slipped that screen, and Robracha not necessarily known for his shot blocking. And Ulis with his second basket on the other side. Hall with eight, and Ulis with five. Spartans were led by Hauser's 11, Walker's 10 in the first half. Hall and Aikens each with eight. All starting the second half, Michigan State went smaller. No Sissoko, no Kohler. 
A.J. Hogard misses the layup, and Robrach has got his first rebound. If you can believe that. Inside to Murray. I don't know why Hogard didn't just shoot that with his right hand. Made it a tougher shot than it had to be with his weak hand. Into Robracha waiting, and he can't finish. What do you think of this small lineup for Michigan State to start the half? I think offensively they are going to have the advantage, but they're going to have to fight like crazy against Robracha, and Iowa is going to look to go at him. Hauser over Murray, too strong. The question will be, Kevin, who can flip the matchup? Is it Iowa with their sides with Robracha, or is it Michigan State with more of a perimeter-oriented lineup? They've got Hall right now, 6'8", 220, against Robracha, 6'9", 230. Pick and roll comes, Robracha whips it. McCaffrey missed it. I like that offense, though. Michigan State going to be aggressive with the hard heads. Robracha can short roll, and then he can facilitate. In the hall against Robracha defensively. Hall fading away and buries it. He is so tough with that fadeaway jumper. It's something that he's added to his game over the last two seasons. And Malik Hall getting that separation and going up with the jumper. Now a foul on Hall is his second. Well, shot fake and then the spin. He gets his space. Robracha not even close to contesting that shot. And Malik Hall more than capable of scoring it in the post. He's banged up early in the year, missed eight games. He just came back for that first Iowa game. Murray! That sounded pretty. <laughs> Looked good, too, his first three. Michigan State zoning up under out of bounds, and that's the one guy you've got to locate. Hasn't shot it well the last couple games, but just seeing that ball go through the hoop, he can get hot in a hurry. Walker at the other end. Another Michigan State three. They are seven for nine. Great flare screen from Joey Hauser. He gets Tyson Walker that look. Rabracha on Hall. Hall with the two fouls. Rabracha ducks in and draws the third. Michigan State not finding Chris Murray. He just pops right back. Tyson Walker a little bit late on the closeout. And then there's the flare from Hauser. This game is awesome. <laughs> this, is just, <laughs> this is so offense, but it, you know, not a game for those that want to see great defense, but you like scoring, this is for you. Hey, there are a lot of Big Ten games that have this score after 40 minutes. So true. Let's enjoy this. Rabracha, 65% free throw shooter. First. Six Eastern tonight, Sonic Blockbuster at Chapel Hill. Number six, Virginia against North Carolina. Virginia Tech and Duke after that at 8 Eastern and then the West Coast Conference Championship on the line With St. Mary's and Gonzaga after the Gales won in Moraga a couple of weeks ago Game day crew is there Dan Shulman Jay Billis will be on the call Our 10th tie of this game after Rocha's two free throws Sissoko replaces Hall who's out with those three fouls How's her cut off? Walker Walker left-handed again. How many times have you said that about Tyson Walker tonight now Four. great awareness by Joey Hauser he, he felt that double coming on the health defense and skipped it to Walker 15 points for Michigan State's leading scorer above his season average of 14 Good bounce McCaffrey to Eulis knocked away by Sissoko taken by Walker Spartans can run it Aikens lays it in Is the largest lead for Michigan State at four. It stays at four. Murray misses a three. Real tempo in their Michigan State giving Iowa a little taste of their own medicine. Defense to offense. They are unafraid to play at this breakneck pace, Michigan State. Hogard again. Punched by Murray and a foul. A.J. Hogard will shoot a pair. Chris Murray with his first. Well, Hogard finally turning the corner and his aggressiveness, little hesitation move, and then the burst to get to the rim. It was a quiet first half for A.J. Hogard, much as it was on Tuesday. Against Indiana, he heated up in the second, though. Hogard had 17 of his 22 in the second half Tuesday that emotional win first home game Since the shooting on Michigan State's campus a week ago Walker and Hogard were terrific Understandably it was a slow start for Michigan State in that game, but 
They played some of their best offensive basketball of the season in the final 30 minutes. And if they're going to make a run here as we get to March, their guard play with Tyson Walker and A.J. Hogard is going to have to be great. Now, that great, not necessarily, but take care of the basketball, have to be productive, and A.J. Hogard has to be more consistent. Murray's got the big size advantage on Aikens. Sissoko doubles. Iowa swings it to an open Perkins. Hit for three. But Rebracha totally makes that play. Out of the double team, the rotation is coming over. But Rebracha ducking in. And that rotation late to the shooter. 14 assists for the Hawkeyes on 20 makes. Aikens. Step back. Pure. Pretty good defense there by Connor McCaffrey, but Jay Nakins just better offense. Tough step back. It'll be a foul against the freshman oh, Holliman. Michigan State still set up a GoFundMe. James Harden donated to the GoFundMe. Amazing gesture, one of many that folks have made for the folks that have been impacted in those Michigan State shootings. Right now, John Spartans are up by six. Just about 15 minutes to go in the game. Second meeting between the Spartans and the Hawkeyes this year. Michigan State won the first 63-61 at home. McCaffrey back cut for Murray. And a foul on Michigan State. Tyson Walker's first. Not the greatest spacing for Iowa there on that possession, but still they're so active cutting off the ball Chris Murray finding a way and then staying on it with the offensive glass Here's Eulis. No, I don't think Aaron Eulis realized how open he was initially <laughs> and I don't think Robracha did either Boy, That's a huge missed opportunity there at the basket Walker with a game of high 15 a cutting Aikens Rare miss for him. He'd been five for six Perkins followed his miss slipping down got it back to McCaffrey I was gonna little bit cold offensively to start the half Sissoko knocks it away from a loose change to Murray bounce feed from McCaffrey Perkins three yes and the foul. chaos leads to creation well, I didn't get to see it because this guy is standing in front of me, but it <laughs> <laughs> looks like off the Chris Murray pass. Tony Perkins finding his way, and Jay Nakins just a little over-aggressive. This guy right here, <laughs> better yeah. window or door? Yeah, I, I, I'm not sure what happened, but then I got to see the replay, so I saw it. We'll get him a translucent <laughs> shirt next time. Don't worry. Couldn't be a four-point play for Perkins. He has the last six for Iowa. Caffrey, Patrick, that is, and Sanford on the floor for the Hawkeyes. A good flash by Hauser. That attention being shown to Sissoko, and Hauser saw his man come over, flash right to that elbow. Good offense. Five for seven, he's got 13. Perkins again! Three in a row from deep for Tony Perkins! He's been a different shooter in this building. 40% at home, 16% rotor neutral, and Tony Perkins impacting this game from the three-point line. Sissoko wants it. Five to shoot. Scoop to Aikens. And that will quiet the crowd. Another three for Aikens, who is four for four. Just can't lose track of Aikens when you're guarding Sissoko, who on the season is shooting 31% on post-ups. If you're Iowa, that's what you want. But an Aikens three, absolutely not. Babracha finding Murray Sissoko. Blocked it, but called for a foul. 
looked clean on the initial action unless he got in with the body. And Tom Izzo is asking about just that. I agree. Rebracha again is a facilitator. And Sissoko coming over. Boy, that is a break. It's like Sissoko got all ball. Not really any contact with the body there. That shot says it all. That word says it all. Third foul on Sissoko. Yeah, good idea to just stick with Tom for a while. <laughs> Tom is going to keep Sissoko in the game along with him. Free throws for Murray, who scored five points Wednesday in the loss to Wisconsin. That was... His worst offensive game since the NCAA tournament loss to Richmond last season. Ten points, but he's only four for 11, one for five from three today. Quite the same Chris Murray the last couple of games. Iowa going back to that 2-3 zone. Only have seen a possession of this, and at the end of the half, Michigan State handled it pretty well. Shooting 66% in the game, Michigan State. Eight for 11 in the second half. Ready to shoot it. Walker inside hall blocked and fouled by Rabracha is second. What a fine late clock and give credit to Malik Hall for just finding this open area. Iowa matching up up top and Hall just doing work on that baseline. There's been a lot of finding open areas for Michigan State. A lot, State of, a lot of open areas for both teams here this afternoon. Very good free throw shooter Hall. Carson Cooper will check in for the first time. Freshman from Jackson replaces Sissoko. He didn't play against Indiana. A left ankle injury, and certainly it's been a guy who, with his athleticism, has been a third option at the center. Rolled it in practice on Monday. They're happy to have him back. Foul trouble against Sissoko and Hall. Hall in there with a three. Sissoko gets a breather. Hogard against Murray. Tried to draw him in the air. Murray into the post. Rolls it home. It's going to be his advantage right there. Take Hogard inside and use your length over the top. Ball's pass deflected. And wow. Perkins kept it alive. Oh, boy. Hauser was just trying to box out Sanford. Who went charging into the back of Hauser. No foul. Different story, and that's been the case here this afternoon. Both these offenses, Iowa, 1.3 points per possession. Michigan State, 1.4 points per possession. The average across college basketball this year, 1.03. And McCaffrey took it away from the whole guard, missed the layup, and then committed the foul. Second on Patrick McCaffrey. R run through that one more time. So 1.03, just over a point per possession is the college basketball app. Yes, and today Iowa is at 1.326 and Michigan State is at 1.413. So Iowa's had some rhythm out here. Some 47 possessions. They've scored on 26. That's well more than half. Michigan State has been even better than that. They've scored. I would tell you, but the game stats are loading a little bit slowly. It's been just about as good. Let's go with that. I was ramping up this pressure here. Seems like most of the time that press is done to take time off the clock, but these last two times, they're diving it up. Thought they had an inbound violation on the other end. Instead, it's Walker with one to shoot. Got it up. Got it in. It doesn't matter how late in the shot clock it gets. Michigan State's just going to score it anyway. It's just a, a really tough shot because Patrick McCaffrey is right there. They are shooting 67% in the game. Murray's miss cleaned up by Walker. It's a 9 for 12 half for Sparty. 3 for 3 from D. 4 for 4 from the line. Shot it at 63% the first half. And they've been better. Hauser. He's out of bounds. I think Joey Hauser needs to just let that fly. Peyton Sanford's going removed. He's been great all year off screens. And there gets caught on the baseline trying to tightrope it and steps out. First game between these teams, Michigan State won 63-61. Surpassed that with a quarter of the game to go. 
Uh, Carson Cooper doing a nice job fighting Robracha. Look at how far he pushed him off the block. And then Malik Hall on the ball with the kick. Robracha's only scored two points. He's only taken one shot in the second half. Why is that? Yeah, that's a great question. Because in the first half, Iowa went to him early and often and, and kept it going all half long. Now, Tony Perkins has gotten hot. And there's an offensive foul against Robracha away from the play. And Philip Robracha picks up number three. He's ducking in, and Kelly Pfeiffer saying that as he wraps him there, now there's not a whole lot of contact in, unless it's that right arm, which we couldn't see on that replay. That was just a tough angle on the replay. Yeah, That's not I, because the guy was standing in front of the right arm. Just to correct, clarify. yes. He'll get you later, don't <laughs> worry. Yes. I could see that play. <laughs> But the camera angle did not allow to see his right hand. Good minutes for Cooper with Sissoko on the bench with three fouls. And we have not seen Kohler in this second half. Here's Cooper, the freshman. He is fouled. McCaffrey will take it, his second. And free throws upcoming for Carson Cooper. And at times Iowa's pick and roll defense this afternoon has had some issues, whether they're switching or not. And they're. And A.J. Hogard taking advantage and dumping it off to Carson Cooper, who comes a trip to the foul line. A late signee joined the Spartans in May. Bit of a freshman class they really like. And they really like the freshman class coming in next year, too. Top line by Xavier Booker, one of the top prospects in the country. We'll see for Tom Izzo's team next year. There's still some veterans that could come back, have another year of eligibility. There's a chance that Michigan State has a pretty special group next year, but there's still a chance that this season ends in pretty special fashion. Spartans have their largest lead of the game at seven. Sanford had a great first half. He hasn't taken a shot in the second. Perkins, it's been all Tony Perkins. I love the action. Back screen, rescreen. You bring him off. Perkins has the option to shoot it or drive it. He curls it and gets to the basket. Last two home games, Perkins scored 56 points. He's got 16, a team high today. He's more than capable. 32 against Illinois. Off the ink, it's missed. Patrick McCaffrey. Connor McCaffrey fouled by Cooper. Just a smart play there. He sees who he's got. He's got Cooper, and as soon as Connor McCaffrey caught that ball, he's just ripping and driving. Here's that Tony Perkins action. It's the back screen. If you're Tyson Walker, it's coming right back for you on the rescreen. Just a little bit behind the play, and because of that, that allows Perkins to get downhill. One and one. Oh, McCaffrey missed it, but a lane violation will give him a second chance. It would have been just his fourth missed free throw of the season. Wow. And now it is again. A huge missed opportunity for Iowa points. Hogard. Nine to shoot for Walker, who's been brilliant deep in the shot clock. His pass deflected to Hogard. He wants Hauser out of there. Hogard wants to isolate. And the rebound grabbed by Sanford. How about Connor McCaffrey flying in and tipping that to Sanford? Oh, Sanford. He checked. <laughs> Women's team loves it. We'll see those hot shooters tomorrow. We see these hot shooters right now for Iowa. Sanford, four out of six from deep. Walker with space and another answer for Michigan State. Well, the hard hedge by McCaffrey and just no one rotating, but in transition, you got to get back. McCaffrey getting a pretty good look in Michigan State earning a stop. Walker with his fourth 20 point game. Had just 10 in the first meeting. 10 for 12 now from three-point range for the Spartans. Hogard head down into Murray and foul. 
Free throws for Hogard coming up. Coming to town, one of the marquee matchups in college basketball this season. Michigan State and Iowa's men's teams here just warming the nets up for what's going to be a high octane game tomorrow. And a high octane game today. AJ Hogard hasn't scored much, but six assists. Good distributor as he typically is. And Hogard rolls in a pair. 64% field goals, 10 of 12 threes, 9 of 10 free throws for Michigan State. But Iowa not that far behind. They've created turnovers in the first half. They're down just seven despite the lack of defense. Michigan State going back with that small lineup. Can Chris Murray and Philip Robracha take advantage? Ken right there with a foul against Hogard. And that'll put Murray at the line for a one and one. Murray just five points Wednesday at Wisconsin. You were there. You're seeing him again today. Why is he a little off the pace, do you think? That's a good question because all year long, and he dealt with an injury to, to his foot in December, missed some time in his comeback. He's third in the league in scoring, fifth in rebounds. Just kind of going through one of those stretches where he's gotten quality looks. They, Iowa has not been the same team offensively on the road. And you look at him today, and it's just high octane from everybody. And it's just it's one of those deals where he's trying to shoot his way through a slump. You gotta let him do that if you're Iowa. Yeah, I mean you need him if you're gonna win and win in March Chris Murray is gonna have to lead the way It's up to 14 today 5 to 13 shooting one of four players in double figures Same thing with the Spartans good handle by Walker good finish There's Sanford One of those eight double figure scores in the game Close out by Hauser. Sanford drives it. Off the window and good for Peyton Sanford. Man, that's where he's been effective this season all year long. 66% on shots at the rim. And that's a real weapon when you're getting, getting closed out to as a shooter. Just driving Hauser and making a tough one. Hauser against Murray. Robracha comes over late. Hauser slipped through and missed it. Hawkeyes looking to run. Can tie it with a three. The Caffrey. There's the find. There's the miss by Sanford. And Connor McCaffrey knew exactly where he was all the way down the floor. That's a quality look. And if you're Iowa, you'll take it all day long. Jay Nakins, career high right now is 16 for him. Walker out of a double team. Feeds it to Hall, got it away to Walker, two to shoot it, and again, late shot clock magic from Tyson Walker. Well, again, Iowa choosing this time to trap that ball screen. Malik Hall's flash to the basketball, gives the ball handler an option, and then he makes a great pass. Tyson Walker paying it off with the pull-up. 22 in the game for Walker. Sanford. Oh, this is not going to count. It's an offensive foul on the screen. It'll be Connor McCaffrey's third foul for Iowa. He's pinning in Peyton Sanford. That, that got the roll, too. That drew iron and fell in. Connor pleading his case. Son of Iowa's head coach. Not much of a dispute from the fans after seeing the replay, though. Hall against Robracha. Wants to get to that fadeaway. It's not going to make Fran McCaffrey happy. And it's Robracha's fourth, too. Uh, there, before Fran even said a word, his assistants are out to make sure he doesn't have much to say. Malik Hall, really aggressive here. Both these guys banging. Benefit of the doubt, going to go to the offensive player there. Malik Hall it is initiating a lot of that contact. Robrach is giving it back to him. That's just two guys going at it. One and one. Iowa's going to be a little bit careful.
careful not to lose its collective head right now after these foul calls. Right or wrong, you could see the emotion on yeah, the Hawkeyes' well, faces. And in this game, a seven-point lead is the equivalent of a one-point lead. I mean, it can change in the blink of an eye. The Broncos had a quiet second half, but he'll draw a foul against Hauser. And they will like that here in Iowa City. Yes, they will. The physicality down low, and the refs are trying to get control of the game. Hauser trying to whip around, and now it's going to be Philip Abrach's turn to go to the foul line. Nine fouls on Michigan State, one and one for Rabracha. Perfect at the line today. Michigan State's done a much better job of limiting his touches here in the second half. It's, it's not been easy to get him the basketball, and you have to give a lot of credit to whether it's been Sissoko, Hall, Hauser. Those guys in the second half have kept it from him. These teams fighting for a top four spot, double by at the Big Ten tournament. Fighting to solidify their at-large cases, fighting for a big win on the penultimate Saturday of the college basketball regular season. Hogard around a screen. Hogard, Hauser, open, got it! Another Michigan State three! The way that Malik Hall flipped the screen right at the end allowed Hogard to come off again. It's rotations out of the pick and roll, and this time it's Joey Hauser getting it done. And Hogard took it away from Murray. Only the eighth Iowa turnover. Michigan State shooting threes as if the basket is 50 feet wide. They're 11 of 13. Insane. 84% from downtown. They're like layups. Late in the shot clock. This is Walker's time to shine. Crossing. Scoring again. He is unstoppable. He just broke Tony Perkins off with that crossover. May have broken Iowa's spirit. Largest lead for Sparty. Murray leans in and gets fouled. Tyson Walker, one of the games of his life, 24 points. On a show today on the road. And the Michigan State starting five has supported him. Everyone in I double figures say. except Hogard, who has seven assists. And an 11 for 13 number from three. Look at these field goal numbers. That's I mean, it's ridiculous. And the three-point field goal numbers are even better. Walker's two of three, Aikens four of four, Hauser four of four, Hogard has knocked down a three. 11 of 13 from three is unbelievable. It's two misses by Murray there on the free throws. Offensive rebound with Blotcha, and then Murray gets fouled again. Hogard's third. Well, for Tyson Walker, comes over from Northeastern, where he was a terrific player. It's obviously a major step up in competition. Established himself as the season went on last year as somebody unafraid to make the big shots about the Purdue game last year. Think about all the big shots yeah. he hit in the loss to Purdue this year. He is kind of that cheat code for Michigan State. Shot clock gets down to two, three, four. Long two. But he threes. can get his own. I mean, he can yeah. play pick and roll. He's effective in that. He can get to the basket. He's a shot maker. He can get to his pull up. Now, I've heard Tom Izzo talk. A good amount of how Tyson Walker in past years would have been a guy because of the rules who sat out and that would have benefited him to learn the way they wanted to play get used to the physicality and the speed of the game at the Big Ten level but he was cast into the fire and look they needed him you know, they, they needed him to be out there with AJ Hogard but now you're looking at a guy who, who's really in his zone right now was fabulous against Indiana it's been terrific again today but he's a guy that can win you games in the NCAA tournament. One and one. What's the first thing a lot of folks go to when they talk about winning games in the tournament? It's guard play. It's guards that can, can go get you a bucket. A end of the game, you just can't scheme for that. How do you scheme for a guy that can break you down and get his own? And that's what Tyson Walker can do. Now, they're going to need A.J. Hogard to play really well as well because he's a big part of this too. Tyson Walker has been just so good the last two games. Starting to look like a team built for March. Up by 10, three and a half to go. Iowa hoping for one final push. 
Sanford clanks it. Robracha scores over Sissoko and scores over Sissoko. 18 points for Philip Robracha. That's grown men basketball right there. He's had a hard time getting on the block, so just go get it yourself on the offensive glass. Walker got it in a tough place, quickly broke the press to Hall, who didn't hit Sissoko, decided to take the air out of the ball a bit. Walker, four shy of a season high. 26 points for the senior from Westbury, New York, on Long Island. Got a flash of the ball here. Now, it doesn't matter because Tyson Walker's breaking it himself. Three to oh, shoot really, it. Really aggressive trapping ball screens. Got to be Hall. On the rim, Sissoko over the top. Uh, that's going to stay with Michigan State. Sissoko went over the back of a couple of Hawkeyes, and he was deemed to have done so legally. And that misses the initial over the back that fans didn't like. A fresh 20, Walker gets it back from Hall. All those early turnover issues for Michigan State have been much better. Only three in the second half. Walker creates again. Untouchable, unstoppable, undeniable. Walker with 28. Perkins nearly turned it over and then did, in fact, turn it over. Well, Michigan State has found something here in the second half. They've been flipping these ball screens right at the end. And Sissoko looks like Walker's going to come off to the left. Sissoko flips it to the right and gets that guard behind. Look at where Rabracha is coming. Now he's got to get to the other side. And then the step back, Tyson Walker just creating space and drilling it. As the last six for Michigan State, Akins will take a timeout. First timeout of the second half. For either team, amazingly. Down against Nebraska, though Nebraska's been a little pesky. There's a, a world in which this team finishes 17 and 15. It's not likely. One more win would probably seal it. Maybe they're in already, but the way I was played in this game is what concerns you as much as any result. Right now. Well, just the, the offense has been more than good enough. Boy, I thought that could have been a jump ball. Looked like it. But defensively, I mean, you let a team shoot 63% from the field, 85% from three. You're in the coffin corner here. That's, Tyson Walker is very fortunate. That could have very easily been a tie-up. But against Ulis, and McCaffrey says, no, thank you. So Walker can tie a season high with two at the line. Mizzo said, get off the foul line, get back in transition. He was very concerned when we spoke with him this morning. Well, there's, you could see that coming right there. Technical against Aaron Eulis leaving the game. We mentioned it a few moments ago. Iowa needs to control the emotion of the game, and it has gotten away from them. I, I think you can understand reasonably some of the frustration with some of the fouls called, but... Well, that last one, that was, I think that was a jump ball, yeah. but I don't think the officials are the reason that Iowa is not winning this game. Agreed. I mean, Michigan State has 88 points in Iowa City. That's Certainly, there's always going to be calls that you think go against you, but they, they just have not been good enough defensively today. So Walker hit the first free throw for the common foul. Goes one for two on the technical foul. Don't know what Eula said, but you was on, I, it was on Fran McCaffrey. Oh, it okay. wasn't on Aaron. Never mind. So. <laughs> Apologies to Eula, who was just checking out of the game. All he's doing is subbing out, and he's drilled by Kevin Brown. So, <laughs> sorry, Aaron. <laughs> Honest mistake. <laughs> he's just going to the bench. And... I guess I should have figured it would be on Fran McCaffrey. He was ejected a week ago at Northwestern. Here's Sanford, and Perkins collects it, he's got 18.
Well, that's twice in the last couple of weeks one of us has unintentionally slighted an Iowa player on air, so we're even now. <laughs> that's a good point. And, and you know what? Philip Robracci and I talked it out. <laughs> Can you just give the backstory briefly as Hall gets fouled by Murray? Yes, yeah, so I was talking about Matthew Nicholson in a Northwestern game and how he's had to go against all these great bigs in the league, whether it's Edie, Trace Jackson Davis. And I went down the line and I mentioned how even, you know, you're going against the second or third tier of bigs in this league. It's Stephen Crowell, it's Julian Reese. And I left Philip off the list. And it wasn't a slight. I think Philip Abrach has been phenomenal this year. But it's all about who you've seen recently. And there's a recency bias in your head. And you're just pulling this as you're doing these games. You're just saying these names. And Philip was watching, and Connor and Patrick McCaffrey told me that he was incredibly upset. We and it, wasn't, it was not a diss, I promise. I think Philip Abrach has been tremendous. I think he's. Certainly in that conversation in the second tier of bigs in this league. He's more than earned that for timeout, Iowa. We found this out last week. We were sitting here between shootarounds and filling the coach, but that's one way of we've getting got another minute 29. Across. Who knows what we'll see right. next here? <laughs> and he got teed up for saying something, so I guess Fran figured he wouldn't say anything. Hogard fouled. like the Wild West <laughs> back in the day. <laughs> oh my goodness. I love that they brought the space closer together. You know, Kelly kind of walked forward. There's never a dull moment in the Big Ten. There is never a dull moment. That moment will live on in college basketball Twitter for the rest of time. The stare down is, is really hilarious. That is really funny. McCaffrey and Pfeiffer at the OK Carver Hawkeye Corral. <laughs> this court ain't big enough for the two of us. We need the movie promo guys voice to get in here. <laughs> one coach, one referee, <laughs> one stare down. <laughs> one unblinking friend McCaffrey. <laughs> Oh my goodness. We can't be sued for that, can we? I don't think so. We'll find out in a minute 16. Season high points for Michigan State, meanwhile, through all this. Murray fouled by Hauser. I need to get Chris Murray going from downtown. So I will go on forward. He's been effective around the basket. He's 6 of 14 from the field. He does have 18 points, and it's been about as quiet of an 18 point performance as you'll ever have, but. One of six from three, which means that over the last three games, he is now two of 17 from beyond the arc. Completes a three-point play. By the way, tomorrow we've mentioned the Iowa-Indiana game. Number two versus number six. Terrific matchup between the Hoosiers and the Hawkeyes here at Carver Hawkeye. Great game before that. Notre Dame-Louisville, ESPN and the ESPN app. Iowa gets a steal. Perkins misses a three. Hawkeyes fighting to the bitter end, and a foul is called. And Philip Robracha has fouled out of this game. Played very well, especially in the first half. 18 points, five assists were one shy of a career high, two. And Robracha fouls out with a minute six to go. It's just hard to believe that he only took two shots in the second half. Really hard. Because he was so effective in the first and Iowa did such a good job of finding him almost giving him the entire side at times to operate against Kohler and Sissoko especially when Michigan State went small with Hauser and Hall I just a little bit surprised they didn't find a way to get him more involved and to be fair it's not like Iowa lost this game because of their no, offense no but and you're right to you only know, get Robracha two after they had him the ball two three four straight totally. possessions and Michigan State you know they've got players on scholarship too that are trying to take away things and they, they did a great job of pushing him off the block and making it tough to get the ball into him and he was just such a big part of Iowa's attack in the first half Aikens now with a career high 18 on his 20th birthday. <laughs> terrific day for the sophomore from Farmington McCaffrey's three short Sanford fouled Back to the line we go There's a birthday boy Jaden Akins 
played very well in the first game against Iowa and has been even better this Saturday morning into afternoon. If you told him he could sign up for four threes on the road on his birthday, Jaden Akins would probably take that. That's six straight in single digits coming into the game. Just been 37% for the field in that span. Cure for the common offense for Michigan State today. Hogard fouled. Season high 95 for Michigan State. They had 89 against Buffalo earlier this season. Walker with a season high 31 for the Spartans. Each team with four players in double figures, including Akins, who misses just the third free throw miss in the game for Michigan State. It's cooled. <laughs> it's really cooled off. Wow. Going to be asking some real questions about this team's yeah. ability to close out games. Make shots. Can they do it? Yeah, yes, they can. They're 21 of 24 at the line in the half. There were two for two in the first. It's not a Michigan State team that gets to the foul line no. all that much. McCaffrey. Fran McCaffrey. Certainly were rough. They, they were really struggling. And he's come in here in, in Iowa. Not only have they had all Americans, but. They have certainly become a program that's going to the NCAA tournament year in and year out. Oh, travel against Hall. This just got a little more interesting. You dial up your best under out of bounds play and get a three here, and all of a sudden there's some real game pressure back on Michigan State. It's a 12 point game a moment ago, it seemed. Murray from McCaffrey. No. Rebound Patrick McCaffrey. Back to Murray. Deep one. Got it. Four point game. Iowa takes its final timeout. An absolutely wild day of college basketball. Starts with a bang in Iowa City. Akins can run here on the baseline. Got it in to Hogard. We've got a foul. I think and Kelly just said he was not out of bounds. I guess that means before the foul. I would think. It looked I, like he was out of, bounds. Was out of bounds. Unless he didn't have possession, but it certainly seemed like he was. Holgard hits the first. This was a 91-78 game with a minute 34 to go. And in a minute and five seconds to play, Iowa cut 13 down to four. It's back up to six. Eight to three here. Uh, you're, yes, you're getting in that time. A two, you just you don't have time if you're going to go for that. This is to play. And it sure was Patrick McCaffrey. Three point game. Iowa sets up the pressure. Akins got it to an open Hogard. Perkins reaches in. How in the world are the Hawkeyes still in this thing? The initial push. Michigan State getting confused with who they're guarding. Malik Hall, Joey Hauser gets switched up. Hall not realizing he's guarding Patrick McCaffrey and just giving up a wide open shot. Hogard 8 for 8 at the foul line today. A lot of people have left. This game. Try to beat the traffic. It was a 13 point game with a minute 34 to go. What a finish they're missing as Michigan State takes timeout number three. It's three point percentage in a game in basketball this season. Minimum of 10 attempts, 85%. So, five point game. Perkins for Iowa. Michigan State all over the three point line now. It's like the umbrella zone. They're just taking away threes. But and it doesn't matter. 16-3 the game for Iowa. Two-point game. Akins to inbound again. Akins searching into Hogard. 
fouled at 10.2, and he'll need to hit both again in five previous games. He'll hit 10 in the second half alone. So Mr. Cool at the line. 10 for 10. Now 11 for 11. That one rattled home. This is starting to feel like the college version of King's Clippers from yesterday. <laughs> Make it a two possession game. He oh, will no. not. This game is a lot. Do you foul? Well, they foul. And I think in this you play it out because it's live, but this is going to be a good look. Sanford! Wow. Got it. He got it! You cannot be serious! Hogard for the win! No! Oh, wow! Overtime in Iowa City! A 9 3 run in the final 20.7 seconds. This is the Wisconsin game all over again. And, and you know what? In that one, Wisconsin find a, found a way to win in overtime. We'll see. Can Michigan State do the same? Iowa starts with the ball. Sissoko back on the floor for Michigan State. McCaffrey into Murray. Fouled by Akins. Murray to the free throw line where Iowa unbelievably can take the lead. How about Connor McCaffrey posting Sissoko and then Chris Murray ducking in behind him with the smaller Akins? And I can't believe I'm saying this, but Iowa at the line to take the lead. And they have it. The win probability graph of this game is going to look like a sort of EKG line no nurse wants to see. 13 points, 94 seconds to go. The, the old parabola. He's <laughs> coming right back. Lead. Murray. A slow start by his standards up to 24. Akins. And now Michigan State will at some point put up a field goal again. Their last 14 points came from the line in regulation. Right, I think he'd go back to Tyson Walker. Put him in ball screen action. Let him make plays. Iowa has not been great against the pick and roll. Akins instead ties it. Akins! Well, or go right there. That's just Jay Akins making a great individual play. Career high 21 on his 20th birthday. 103. 103. No Rebracha in the game. Remember, he's fouled out for Iowa. McCaffrey, Connor that is with four. Holgard has four for Michigan State. Connor McCaffrey posting Walker. Spinning and fouled. It is Walker's second and McCaffrey will go to the line. Connor McCaffrey taking advantage of the smaller Tyson Walker. Looks like Walker maybe got popped in the mouth there. But there it's clearly we saw it in the first half with Philip Rebracha and now with Chris Murray and Connor McCaffrey Iowa making every effort to go inside. This is shocking to see him miss. He's missed three foul shots. Only two of them have counted, but. He'd missed three on the year. It was 39 for 42. It's one of the most. So he's missed four today. It's one of the most 55 shocking things to happen oh, in this it, game. He missed another. Another one. stepped in. Oh, my goodness. So we've now seen Connor McCaffrey miss five. Is it five? I think, it, I think it's now? four because there was a one and one. But, the, but there was an. Because it was there a front another end of the one and one. We had another lane violation. He got two right. opportunities, right? He missed it. He finally he missed it. There was a lane violation. He missed it again. That was the one and one. So then I think he went two misses, one make it. I think he's one for five. Technically, it's one for three. What is math? Like what are numbers anymore? <laughs> We're all living in a simulation, and in this simulation, Iowa leads the basketball game by one. Hogard into McCaffrey. No! Roll it into Murray. Murray scores again! They are just living at the basket, and Iowa's guards know exactly what they're doing. Throw it inside and let these bigs go to work. McCaffrey, Walker got to the rim, missed it, rebound Murray. Why did he not just lay it up? He put so much English on it, unless he lost it as he was going up. I thought Tyson Walker could have just put that off the glass. 
Under three to play in the overtime. Sanford's been awesome. Sanford! Well, I, I don't know about that shot, though. You've been just getting everything right at the basket. You settle for a turnaround jumper over the top of A.J. Hogarth. Into the hands of Walker with a season high 31. Hauser screens again the matchup with McCaffrey. Pull the arms back. Walker late in the shot clock. This is where he goes to work. It's Hogard. It's a miss three. It's a rebound to Perkins. Michigan State has lost its mojo. McCaffrey against Hauser. Six to shoot it. Murray. McCaffrey. Short. Hogarth's got the rebound. After about 43 and a half minutes, the offenses have finally hit the skids. <laughs> what a game. What a weekend this is going to be at Iowa. Aikens. Cut off by Patrick McCaffrey. It's a steal. Murray is not fouled. Perkins finishes. Tipped in by Tony. Here in Iowa City. The middle of the league this year is just bananas. We had Illinois and Northwestern. Come back for the Illini, down 18 at half on Wednesday. And here on Saturday, we got this one. A crazier. Under a minute to play, it's a five-point game. And Hauser bumped and fouled by Perkins. And the thing is about this overtime period, both teams are now incredibly small. You got Chris Murray playing the five for Iowa. You got Joey Hauser and Malik Hall playing the five for Michigan State. So both teams are switching every action. And this is where you just need players to go and make plays, and Iowa's done more of that here in the overtime. Hauser terrific at the line. It's the first. Snaps a scoring drought of 325 for Michigan State. The free throw numbers absurd. All the shooting numbers absurd. Hauser two for two. Last night, the Los Angeles Clippers won 26 of 45 from three and lost to Sacramento. That's about how Michigan State might feel. I'm Iowa here. I am getting this ball inside. You've got Tyson Walker on the floor. And you get one of these bigger Hawkeyes down there with him. It's McCaffrey. Runned by Hauser. Five to shoot it. And he'll use a timeout. Iowa's final remaining timeout. Smart play there by Connor McCaffrey. That was going. This game, by the way, are going to save forever. I was here all 45 minutes when Iowa Michigan State played. So McCaffrey to inbound to Murray. He's been the man. Murray against Hall. No. The wow. tip is there. Perkins again. Mr. Putback. Two possession game. Hogard is fouled. 20.5 to go. This is again the smallest guy on the floor for the Iowa Hawkeyes. Murray with a nice drive. Can't get the finish, but Tony Perkins, Tyson Walker's trying to block him out, and he just refuses to be boxed out. We have an official review on the foul. I think it's gonna it's gonna be a common foul. I mean it's a hard foul. It's a smart foul. How many people have <laughs> over 14 or 15 points in this game? I mean it's the scoring here. Walker with 31, Aikens with 21, you got Tony Perkins with 22, Sanford with 22, Chris Murray now has 26.
Uh, this was they said a 13 point game at 34 to go and McCaffrey has fouled out It was a 10 point game with 40 seconds left you, That's not mathematically possible you think Five threes in the final 39 seconds and finally Hogard misses a free throw and the, the free throws for AJ Hogard He's the guy you want at the line, but that, that's another massive miss. He did miss the late one in regulation after going 11 for 11 and Michigan State will bring Holloman in for Hogard, maybe just to set up the press. Sanford to inbound it, and Perkins is fouled. I'm just looking at the scoring here, and Michigan State. Went five for six from the line in the last 29 seconds. They were up 10. They went five for six from the line. You mix, and the it, game you mix, went mix up in a overtime. turnover and threes. You know, they're trading twos for threes and a couple turnovers. And that's that's pretty absurd, honestly. It really is. This game has been insane. It's all happening in real time, but there will be some historic Historic numbers that will come out of this. I'm sure it had to be a 99.9 percent chance for Michigan State to win had to be Thirteen with a minute 34 11 points with a minute six Ten points with 40 seconds to go they're down Need a three here Really have no other choice. Hall leans in. He missed it. Rebound, Iowa. Perkins has it. Perkins dribbling out. This is really happening. This has.